In section 7.1, we will talk about the sampling distribution of means and proportions. We use data from samples to make inferences about a population. In the beginning of the semester, we talked about the fact that it's impractical, expensive, and inefficient to survey every single member of a population. So we gather data from a sample, and we use that data to make inferences or conclusions about a population. For example, if you wanted to know how many eligible voters are planning on voting in the next midterm election, we can't survey every single eligible voter. That'll just take too long. So we will survey a sample. Let's say we survey 1,000 people. We use data from this sample to make an inference about the population, which in this case, all eligible voters. We need a reliable way of estimating a population parameter. Remember, we use data from a sample to estimate the population parameter. So this estimator must be accurate and it must be precise. Here's some definitions. Uh, a bias estimator, when an estimator is not accurate, we call it a bias estimator. Unbiased, when an estimator is accurate, it's correctly centered on our population parameter of interest, we call it an unbiased estimator. Sampling distribution is the distribution of a statistic. Remember, a statistic is a measurable characteristic of a sample. For example, the sampling distribution of X bar would show all the possible values X bar can take on for a given sample size n. Here's, here's what that means, and I'll explain this more in class. In the previous example, we're looking at eligible voters. So let's say we take a sample of 1,000 people. But we don't just want to take one sample in one part of the country. So we go to a different part of the country, we take a second sample. Now, each of these samples will have a sample mean. So the sample mean of the first sample is x bar. The sample mean of the second sample is x2 bar. And then we take a third sample of 1,000 people, and this will be x3 bar. So we do this a bunch of times. Let's say we do this 20 times. We take 20 different samples of 1,000 people each. So we will have 20 different sample means. Each of the sample is will have a sample mean. So the sampling distribution, what we can do is we can take the mean of all these 20 samples. We, we take all these sample means, add them together, divide by 20. So mu x bar will be the, the mean of all the sample means. Sampling distribution, by looking at the sampling distribution of a statistic, we can see how good of an estimator the statistic is to estimate a parameter. Here's a notation, make sure you know this stuff. We will be using it quite a lot. Parameter, remember parameter are measurable characteristic of a population. Mu is a population mean. Sigma is a population standard deviation. Sigma squared is variance. And P is a proportion of a population. X bar. Now, X bar is your sample mean. So if you have one sample, X bar is the mean of that sample. S is a sample's uh, standard deviation. S bar is variance. P hat is a proportion of a sample. Mu X bar is the mean of all possible X bars. So again, let's say we have one sample and we have a sample mean. Then we take another sample, we have a sample mean. We have another sample of a, and a sample mean. And let's say this time we have 50 such samples. If you take the mean of all these different sample means, that will give you your mu x bar. The standard deviation of x bar will be the standard deviation uh, of uh, all these sample means, and n is a sample size. Mean and standard deviation of our sampling distribution for x bar. The mean of our sampling distribution for x bar is equal to the mean of our population mu. So if you take all these different sample means and we took we took the mean of all the sample means, that will actually equal to the the actual population mean. The standard deviation of sample means is the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of n, where n is the sample size. For a proportion, the mean of all the population, uh, sorry, the mean of all the sample proportions, remember p hat, this is a uh, sample proportions. 
So the mean of all the sample proportions, this is equal to the population proportion. The standard deviation of population proportions is given by this formula, square root of PQ over N. And remember, Q is equal to 1 minus P, where P is a population proportion. Center limit theorem. For us to be able to apply this concept and make inferences about the population, we need the distribution of sample means to be approximately normal. Here's when that happens. The distribution of sample means x bar will be approximately normal if the original population distribution is already, no already normal. Example that are heights. Heights are already approximately normal. Or if the pop original population is not normal, then the sample size has to be at least 30. So if n is greater than or equal to 30, even if the original population distribution is not normal, then the, the distribution of the sample means x bar will be approximately normal. OK, now let's talk about proportions. The distribution of sample proportions p hat will be approximately normal if these two conditions are met. Remember, n is sample size, p is the population proportion. We'll talk more about this later on. Here's an example. A population has a population mean of 30 and a standard deviation of 2.5, and it's slightly skewed to the right. So the original population is not normal. If a sample size of n equals 40 is randomly selected from this population, what is the mean and standard deviation of sample means? Well, first of all, we have to determine the shape of the distribution of sample means. So if n is greater than or equal to 30, then our, uh, the distribution of our sample means will be approximately normal. In this case, our sample size is n equals to 40, which is greater than or equal to 30. Since that condition is met, we can say that the sampling distribution of our sample means is going to be approximately normal. Now let's look at the center, or the mean. Center is the mean. The mean of our sample means is equal to the mean of the population, and the population mean is 30. Now let's look at the standard deviation. The, the standard deviation of our sample means standard deviation of our sample means is equal to the population standard deviation, which is 2.5, divided by the square root of n, n is 40. So 2.5 divided by the square root of 40, this will equal to 0.395. Let's look at the second example. A population has a proportion, a population proportion of 0.75, and a sample size of 150 is randomly selected. What is the mean and standard deviation of the sample proportions? When you're dealing with means, we use these formulas to get mean and standard deviation. When you have a proportion, remember we have a different set of formulas. So first of all, let's take a look at our shape. So we learned that the, sh the distribution of sample proportions will be normal if these two conditions are met np must be greater than or equal to 10, and nq must be greater than or equal to 10. So in this case, our sample size n is 115, and our p, the population proportion, is 0. 0.75. 115 times 0. 0.75, this equals to 86.25. And that's greater than or equal to 10, which is good. nq, well, N is 115, that doesn't change, but Q is 1 minus 0.75 or 0 0.25. If you multiply 115 times 0 0.25, this gives you 28.75. Once again, that is greater than or equal to 10. Since both NP and NQ are greater than or equal to 10, the sampling distribution will be approximately normal. Let's find the center or the mean. The mean of all the uh, the sample proportions, this will equal to p, which is a population proportion, um, and that is going to be 0 0.75.
standard deviation. The standard deviation of all the sample proportions is going to equal to the square root of NP over Q. That's, that's our formula. So, uh, I'm sorry, square root of PQ over N. I got that mixed up. So P is 0.75. Q is 1 minus P, which is 0.25, and our sample size N is equal to 115. So we have the square root of P times Q over N, that's 0 0.75 times 0 0.25 over 115, and that comes out to be 0 0.0040, if you put that in, in a calculator. Work that out yourself to make sure you can do it. Okay, here's our last example we're going to cover in this video. The population mean, so we're talking about, about means now, not proportions. The population mean for verbal IQ scores is 100 with the standard deviation of 15. Suppose that researchers randomly selected, sampled 50 people. Okay, first off, let's look at the shape. Okay, since n equals to 50, which is greater than or equal to 30, our shape will be approximately normal. So that, that's good. That takes care of that requirement. Let's look at the mean and the standard deviation. The mean of all sample means is equal to the population mean, which is just 100. Now let's look at the standard deviation. The standard deviation of all sample means is equal to the sample standard deviation, which is 15, divided by square root of the sample size, which is square root of 50. And if you put that in a calculator, this will give you 2.12. Now let's take a look at this. What is the probability that the sample mean is greater than 105? So let's say we take a sample. What is the probability that the mean of that sample is greater than 105? So we want the probability that the mean of that sample, whatever sample we take, is greater than 105. So we're going to use our normal calculator because our shape is a normal distribution shape. So in the normal distribution, we're going to plug in mu equals to 100. Our standard deviation, so um, the mean of all the sample means is 100. Now the mean, uh, the standard deviation of, of all sample means is 2.12. So the uh, standard deviation of sample means is equal to 2.12. And you want the probability that this particular sample mean is greater than 105. So make sure because we're dealing with the sample mean, you take the standard deviation of a sample mean and you take the mean of all sample means. So you take these numbers. All right, let's go quickly to our calculator. So in our normal distribution calculator, we're going to put our mean as 100. We're going to go to find probability. Our mean will be 100. And our standard deviation is going to be 2.12. Remember, that's the standard deviation of all sample means. And you want to find the probability that the sample we take has a mean of greater than 105. That probability is 0.92% or 0 0.0092. OK, so let's go back to our slide. This probability that the sample mean is greater than 105 is 0 0.0092. And again, when you're, when you're looking at a sample mean, you have to use the mean of all sample means, and you have to use the standard deviation of, of all sample means. Okay, so let's, uh, let's have you guys do this, uh, this uh, part C and D. What is the probability that the sample mean is less than 92? Uh, what is the probability that the sample mean is between 97 and 106? And we will go over these answers in class.